Okay, we will talk about our trips to Vancouver Island on the Pacific coast. Uh, we'll start at uh, Cape Scott. Well, um, first I'd like to say <laughs> <laughs> that we're so happy that you guys asked it, but we had to go through all our pictures, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. <laughs> uh, we will talk about uh, Cape Scott where we had uh, some backpacking, uh, the Keelquot Sound where we did uh, uh, kayaking, and Nootka Island where we did a uh, walk around on the uh, island coast. In Kayakquot uh, we mostly kayaked and the same for the broken island groups and we uh, hike the West Coast Trail about twice, and that will be the last one. Uh, there's quite a few interesting parts where we didn't go, uh, like for instance, the Cape Scott Island Group, which is a new park since 2018, Marine Park, and Brooks Island, which seems to have different uh, botany, but uh, we hope to get there later on. Cape Scott. Cape Scott is an area where uh, natives have been living for a long time. And then the Danish settlers in uh, early uh, past century uh, started there uh, around 1900. And in World War II, there was a radio station in that area, radar station. Uh, this picture is on uh, St. Joseph Beach, which is a, a very uh, long, uh, sand beach and uh, we are camping on the left hand side of the picture. Uh, Cape Scott is like a really beautiful area and there's a, a lot of sand stacks still standing, uh, sea stacks still standing there. Uh, on those sea stacks you can find uh, black lilies which is on the right hand side uh, in the picture. That was at the end of June. When you go in September, you will not find them. This is the first time we actually did see them. They're beautiful. Uh, on, on the beaches, there's a lot of uh, old wood uh, coming in. Uh, sometimes you get uh, sea fog coming in. Uh, there's also uh, lots of flowers, which you don't see on the picture in the left, but if you take a closer look uh, a little bit higher up, you can find things like red columbine or the beach carrot, which hardly shows on the sand because it's very much the flower is the same color as the sand. And of course, sea rocket, which is, seems to be everywhere. Uh, yeah, off the coast, there is this uh, huge marine park and there's all kinds of wildlife coming there. And what you see here uh, is a humpback whale uh, on the right hand side with a calf on the left hand side of the mother. And when we turned around from this picture, there was actually a bear behind us on the beach. So there was a lot of wildlife. Uh, on our backpack trips, uh, we usually uh, don't bring water just for the first day. And then we have to go and find water. And uh, that's how I found this uh, Vancouver ground cone on the left hand side. That's, uh, that's a parasite that uh, lives on mainly Salal and possibly uh, Kinikinik. Uh, and it's usually a, quite a little bit inland, but on big beaches. Uh, so it, it really needs those areas to uh, survive. Uh, the red-legged frog on the right-hand side is, uh, was just in the process of eating a slug and uh, it was just one of those interesting finds uh, which you have once in a while. I thought this is so interesting because when you spend a lot of time uh, on a beach and you are there 24-7, so you are there in the evening, in the morning and we did so many, so many awesome things. And this is, I think, the purple sea crab. And I just, not even the purple sea crab in itself, but sure. just 
the purple shore crab, I'm sorry, but just the tracks it left, it was just so beautiful to see that. It's super enjoyable, all that beautiful nature. Uh, hiking in and out, you go through uh, box which are covered with all kinds of uh, little plants. Uh, in this uh, picture, you can see uh, the round leafed sundew, uh, which is an in insectivore. And you can also see uh, the flowering box cranberry, which is a very tiny cranberry compared to the commercial species. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, interesting. Um, what we also found there is uh, common butterworth, uh, which is also a, a specialist uh, that uh, feeds on insects. And then uh, this is uh, at uh, Nissen Bay at the sunset. It's just wonderful to enjoy that uh, after a day of uh, hiking. So the next one is, uh, okay. is uh, Kierquad. And because um, what we realized is when you want to see that beautiful west coast of Vancouver Island, you have, you have to go there and be active because there's hardly any roads into it. So we went to Kierquad and we drove to Sabellas and then drove and were picked up by a water taxi uh, to bring us in. The drive in there was kind of interesting because we just fitted right under that 2.44 meters. We had to be very careful to be able to get there. And then the very next day uh, we were picked up by a water taxi and he brought all our kayaks and our gear and ourselves to our starting point on the Bunsby Islands. And then we kayak back from the Bunsby Islands to um, uh, the Sea Park, which is called, I don't have it here, but doesn't really matter. And it was just a beautiful experience. This is the Bunsby Islands where it just dropped us off. So we made camp there. And um, so typically what we're doing, our kayaking trips are with friends and our hiking trips are with, uh, we're with the White Rock Leisure Group, which was just amazing to have that opportunity to do that. Um, this is uh, on the Bunsby Islands. So what we'd like to do is stay put one night and, uh, and then the very next day kayak around where we are and just look at the marine life and just enjoy where we are. And then the next day just go on our trip, just move camp and just go somewhere else and start doing the same thing again. And same thing, Bunsby Islands. And it just shows you how just how beautiful it is. It's wild. There's hardly any people there. And the people who are there, they're actually very respectful of nature. And they've got lots of great stories to share around the campfire with a little bit of a glass of wine. So it's, it's all good. That's the nice thing when you go kayaking, you can bring a lot of food and you can bring a lot of booze. <laughs> Backpacking, you will not do that. So again, what always amazes us, there's always paintbrush wherever you go on the shorelines. I always associated it with Alpine, but shorelines have um, it all the time. Beautiful kinds of seaweed. I'm not quite sure what this one's called, but it was just beautiful to look at. Um, this is an early morning start on our paddle. And that's the nice thing too, when you're camping and you can get out whenever the weather is beautiful and early in the morning, it's just so nice and quiet. It's just, it's awesome. And you are there and no one else is there and nothing actually beats that feeling, I think. Um, then we see, um, we like to kind of just that one day we do our marine kind of wildlife things. So there's a lot of things you can see. So here you can see, um, these are the bed stars. They're all kind of different colors. There's a letter star in there uh, and a lot of little more things. Um, there's a morning sun star, we think, on the top hand, right? Um, sunflower star. And there's a giant pink star, which is the guy on the left hand bottom there uh, and they're just so beautiful and it looks easy to take pictures of that it truly believe me it's not because you're floating on the water you've got nothing to hold you on to and before you know it you've floated away from where you would like to take your picture from so this was actually very nice to be able to do this uh. so then kayaking you just kayak there and it's just so beautiful and in that area the creek got sound there's a lot of um, sea otters and we enjoy them. The people who live there don't enjoy them very much because they eat a lot of their, uh, uh, what they fish for and um, urchins. 
um, we just love them because they're just so cute and thing. And then by the time we were there at the end of June, there's also a lot of young sea otters in there. And we've seen rafts of sea otters, I think at least 100 sea otters with moms and dads and, and little um, sea otters in there. It was just amazing. Uh, but what we've learned, they're actually very afraid of a kayak because when they were uh, hunted, they were always hunted from a kayak many, many years ago. And that somehow must still be on their brain imprinted. And so you can go very close with a big motorboat, but not with a kayak. So we've hardly seen them very close. Because that's, uh, that's what our uh, water taxi driver told us. And he is a native uh, guy. From Kiyokwak village. Well, pinks, <laughs> um, the giant, um, the pink, uh, giant pink, pink. anemone, very easy to take a picture of because it stays put. So that actually we managed to do that, which is beautiful. And then uh, there's some uh, seabirds uh, on the left hand side. Those are two uh, marble, marbled murrelets. And on the right hand side, uh, that's the rhinoceros uh, arklet. And uh, it's just wonderful to see those guys close up from your boat. Uh, sometimes when you're lucky and it's really quiet water, you can get nice pictures. So the end of our trip was Rugged Point Marine Park. I couldn't think of the name, but it's on my cheat sheet. And so what we did is we camped um, along the beach and we've got our little kitchen here. And then we had a day, we actually uh, walked around there. We did see a lot of wolf tracks and things like that. This is actually our kitchen. So we've got a little pot with a little um, stove under it. We'd bring some uh, great vegetables, of course. We had some salmon, which we didn't actually catch, but we brought. Uh, and of course, you have to bring all your little stuff. You've got your radio because you have to make sure that you know what the marine forecast is. And when you're in, you know, there's something there, you have to be able to call in for help, which we luckily never had to do so far. Uh, and of course, you bring a book to read, but it's just a pretend thing because you don't really read a lot. <laughs> Yeah, so this is um, on one of our camps and we were just very surprised. In the morning we woke up and the, the beach was littered with these little blue guys. And we'd never seen them before in our lives. Um, none of us had taken a picture of that entire beach with all the blue things on there. Um, so all of us only had pictures of the, um, the individuals and they're really interesting. They're called the blue sailor jellyfish and they don't seem to be very uncommon, but sometimes they, have washed, they wash up on shore and um, they're really cool because they're blue. They're about, I would say, 10 centimeters long and they've got like a little sail on them. So when you see them on the water on the left-hand side, that's actually how they're floating on the water. And with the sail, they all end up in the same spot because obviously they're not really in control of their sail. They just end up where they end up. And they were just, we thought really very, very special. Just, we were happy to see those. Um, this is when we kind of just um, moved out. And um, it's just a little bit of an impression about what we're actually kayaking in because it's just so beautiful. You've got mountains, you've got clouds, you've got the water. Um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, the next trip, that's a backpack trip on uh, Nootka Island. And it's called the Nootka Trail. Uh, we flew in with uh, Nootka Air and they dropped off uh, from Gold River and they dropped us off in uh, Louis Bay, which is a shallow bay in, uh, on Nootka Island. Uh, well, there we had to climb up over, uh, over a trailhead and uh, down on the other side. It's pretty steep, but uh, there's ropes there so you can uh, easily get up. Well, you can get up. <laughs> I would say easily all the time because you still carry a backpack with about 15 to 20 k kilos. Um, yeah. Uh, here we are at uh, Colvin uh, Falls uh, and we have to uh, cross the river. Uh, it's relatively deep, so uh, most people take their clothes off. Uh, so you are sort of dry on the other side. Unless you fall in like someone did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, 
often you get uh, wolves uh, going over the beach and uh, Tinek is showing the size of the tracks there. Uh, so it's about half of uh, a lady's foot. Uh, and uh, yeah, we expected they would be around in the early morning. And uh, as you can see in the pictures on the left hand side, there was a wolf and there was even two wolves. Uh, those are taken with cell phones. Uh, I had said they would be uh, pretty early around, uh, I think uh, 4.30 or something. Uh, but I must, they were a little bit earlier and two ladies were up at uh, 4.15 or so. And I came a little bit too late, so I don't dig couldn't use my uh, camera to take pictures. But it was just amazing that they were there. And we were up camping in the driftwood here on the left-hand side, and it just passed along the water line and uh, didn't bother us at all, I'm happy to say. And sometimes you get those beautiful uh, rainbows. Uh, and this one was right over our own tent. So it was sort of enjoyable. Uh, yeah, there's lots of stuff in the water. On the left-hand side, those are the gooseneck barnacles. Uh, and on the right-hand side is a chitin, uh, which is a kind of slug, basically. Um, this is at Friendly, uh, Friendly Cove or Yukot. Uh, Captain Bodega and Quadra, uh, and Vancouver were there in, uh, I think it was 1792. And uh, the Nootka Convention Conference was held. And this uh, glass window was donated by the government of Spain in uh, 57 of the uh, previous century as a remembrance uh, of the happening. And actually it's, it's a window in one of the, in that little church there. No one's using that church, there's nothing inside. Uh, we kept our food inside because it was safe because it had a door which we could lock. Um, and there's in Friendly Cove, there's one family living there. Um, it's the family Williams. And um, they're indigenous people and they're the only ones there. And um, their son, Sanford Williams, he's a master carver. And it was really interesting to see uh, what he did. Um, Nootka Island is one of the islands actually visited by uh, Captain James Cook on his trip to find the Northern Passage. And um, yeah, this, so there's some history there as well. It's not just nature, but there's also some history. And this is one of the uh, totem poles, which were actually down in front of their house. This was a very, um, very old one, very original one. But he was doing all kinds of carving. It was just beautiful what he did. And in front of their house, there was a huge midden, which they were still had there. It was like very old because you could see all kinds of parts and pieces in there from many 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 years ago shells and um, ash and wood and um, it was it was beautiful so we've learned a lot too there about um, the early days uh, the next uh, trip that's uh, the cliopod sound which is a pretty large area and it's also one of the unesco biosphere reserves uh, this guy in the picture is my uh, brother and we were uh, doing a walk there on Mamiara's Island to see some big trees there. Uh, this is just uh, uh, one of the beaches where we camped. We were uh, right in front of the trees there. And uh, sometimes we had uh, mussels uh, for dinner or lunch. Uh, just uh, from the sea and then uh, roasted on wood in well, our own water. We actually had a lot of time there because we were stuck there for about two days because that happens too, because you can only kayak under certain conditions and it's beautiful sunny weather. So that was good, but there was a lot of wind and it was just too much wind for us to kayak. And there were white caps on the water. So we're stuck on that little piece of beach for about two days. So we're happy it was not raining. Um, so we tried to do a lot of things just to keep ourselves entertained and just getting the muscles and roasting was one of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I went with my brother to, uh, to some of the offshore islands to look at birds, but the, the waves were like six feet, so we didn't see any birds. <laughs> no, <laughs> and they didn't see you. <laughs> uh, 
Well, they, they, those are just some pictures of the, the weather with the fog and the, the lone beach. It's, it's, it's really, every day is different and it's beautiful. And you never know what you're going to get the next day. So it's a good surprise. Yeah, this is just a beach where we are doing a, an evening walk on the beach. And it's, again, it's just beautiful. <laughs> Uh, here we were going to take a picture of the eagle and the eagle just decided to fly at that moment. And then uh, on, on the side uh, there is a giant green anemone uh, that uh, just came dry on the tide. Nice little slutchy thing, yeah. And here we are uh, pedaling uh, sort of backward to Vancouver Island where there is Catface Mountain we're facing. Which is, you see it from where we were kayaking around Trufino there, you see it from everywhere. Catface Mountain is iconic there. So the Broken Islands is the next one. So that's kayaking again. Um, I've been doing it once with a group of friends and Wim's been there three times. Four times, I think. Four times with a lot of different little groups. And some people work, <laughs> so some yeah, people kayak. <laughs> oh, we didn't put in a lot of uh, those pictures, but we have done so many things there. It's beautiful. Well, this trip to the Broken Islands was our first trip there. It was in 2005 with a group of friends. And um, we went um, in there from Port Alberni and we were on the Lady Rose, which is uh, a steamer. And the Lady Rose dropped us off at the Seashark Lodge, which is just right north of the Broken Islands. So what we're doing here is we just got dropped off. Our kayaks are here and we're just loading our kayaks and just get ready to cross the Seashark Channel just to go into the Broken Island group. So yeah, you can see a little bit here from all kind of gear we bring. So you bring a spare pedal, uh, you bring your PDFs, uh, all the dry bags with uh, PFDs, I, sorry, and all the dry bags uh, with materials. And then for uh, finding the way you use a map, a GPS, and also a compass. Uh, here we were uh, in, a, in a time frame where the uh, moon snails uh, just had uh, put down their eggs and uh, on the right hand of, uh, picture you see the sand color in which they put the, the eggs. It's just uh, made from sand and slime and it sticks together very strongly. It's almost like, it looks sort of like rubber. And on the left hand side, you can see it outside of its uh, shell. It's a huge, it's a huge uh, animal. Well, in the islands in the Broken Islands, they are very close together, most of them. And there's some really shallow areas and some really sandy areas. And that's where they actually do live. And they were just impressive. But looking at all those little necklaces, uh, in the water, it looked like there's lots of rubber tires in the water. It looked very unnatural, but it was very natural. Uh, the toilets are now changed over to composting toilets. So uh, uh, you have to throw a hand of uh, uh, sawdust in after you used it. And in the middle of the night, it turns around. So it's very quiet where you are. And all of a sudden, that whole thing turns around. So the first night we didn't know what the sound was from, but then we knew. <laughs> uh, here, here we are uh, map reading and uh, looking where we are going. Uh, we were planning a trip through uh, in between two islands, which was a very small uh, area to get through. Uh, so. Well, something you had to find on the map because we missed the map reader of the group and um, the rest of the group was not following us because they thought it was just one shoreline. We couldn't go through. So they were just hanging out. And then in the end, we went through and they didn't see us anymore. So all of a sudden they followed us very, very quickly. And this is beautiful because you can see how shallow it is in this area. So when it's shallow, the water is a little bit warmer as well. And it's, it's just such a beautiful, stunning area, the Broken Islands. It's, uh, it felt like Hawaii at sometimes. No palm trees, but everything else was there. Uh... Here we've got uh, the lion's mane, uh, jellyfish, 
uh, which is, used to be pretty common there. And on the right hand side, the uh, rainbow sea star, uh, which you don't see very often. And uh, I don't know if, how they came through with, uh, uh, with the fires that went through there. Well, deer are very common uh, on the broken group. Here you see a, a, a mother with uh, fawn. fawn. Um, and this is one of the very big cedars on the broken group uh, where we paddled to and then we took a hike uh, to get there. It's a well-known tree. It was just amazing, like a little fairy tree. You could see them all sitting there at night. And uh, but the Broken Islands, we've been, well, we've been there quite a few times. We've seen whales, we've seen a lot of things, but you just cannot take pictures of everything. So you just carry that with you in your, in your head and in your heart. So the last one we're going to talk about is the West Coast Trail. We did it twice, I did it one time. Uh, the time we did it together was with a group of the White Rock Glacier as well. And that was about um, eight people. And we did it in eight days. And our goal is when we travel, it's not just the destination, it's also the trip you take, which we really enjoy doing. And so often we had um, a little bit more than half a day of um, hiking and backpacking. And then we had some time when we were um, at our location to enjoy where we were. And the time we were doing it together, we're extremely lucky because it was just sunny every day. We did not have one raindrop at all, which is very uncommon. Um, but it was just so beautiful. And then we met people on the trail who were doing it um, in 48 hours. I'm pretty sure they didn't see what we did see, but they can say they did it in 48 hours. This is to us a very West Coast kind of picture. See the sea stack, see the water, see the rocks. It's, this is typically what it, um, the, sea, um, the West Coast Trail is all about. Initially, I didn't want to do it because I thought it was going to be utterly boring, only trees and rocks and water. But I'm glad I did it because it was not boring at all. Yeah, the, the, there's one day where you have uh, to take uh, lots of letters and cables and more letters. And that's, uh, that's one of the days where you also get a lot of method stuff. Uh, usually you don't do more than one hour per kilometer. So you only have seven kilometers that day. That's not a lot. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're like 20 or 70. Uh, because you have to watch where, what you do with your feet. It takes a lot of time. Uh, here you see the, uh, the mud and the puddles you go through uh, before you get back on the boards. Uh, there's always a lot of damage on the trail because trees come down. The winter weather is pretty rough on the trail. But we were lucky the times um, I did it and Wim did it because it always had been really nice weather at the time and before that. So um, we think we've seen mud, but a lot of people have a different story from <laughs> us because they've seen more mud. Well, way more. Uh, there's a lot of wildlife going around. Minks are uh, running around uh, at low tides usually. Uh, it's hard to get pictures, but uh, if you're with two, then usually uh, it jumps to uh, one of you, so you can take a shot. Uh, tracks everywhere. On the right hand side, you see the four feet. And then uh, Jay Monique is uh, a little uh, stack from a native uh, lady where you can get a uh, Hollywood burger and really, they are really, really good. And they, they're about the same price as a meat burger, but I, I think they're way better. <laughs> uh, this is just an impression along the coast from all the rocks and uh, the different sandstone forms. Uh, it's, it's sort of like a highway almost. And uh, here's part of our group uh, walking in front of us. Well, it shows you too that when you do um coastal waters and um, the coast, when you hike there, you really have to know what the tides are because at some point you can pass only at certain times, certain tides. And here too, because the water will be in here, but we were passing it at the right moment. So there's also a little bit of homework going into it. The trail is very obvious, but when you can do it, you have to find that you can do it. 
Mm. Yeah, and if you know what you're doing, you can also find lots of stuff because there's uh, fossils and things around, but it's a national park, so you should leave them there. Uh, the purple sea urchin and uh, the giant green anemone on the right hand in the picture. Uh, the urchins are moving around quite a bit. And then uh, it's a hermit crab in the shell on the right hand side. I love those. Um, we, we put a detail in here about the, the area where the urchins are, but those are actually um, like little, that there's about a hundred in an area there and it's, um, it's underwater. And they all seem to be very cozy in their own little hole there. I'm not quite sure how they do make it, um, but they're all there and they're just beautiful to look at. And they're so bright, bright, bright purple. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, it was a whole world under, onto itself, actually. Uh, here's one of our campsites. So that's all in between the woods, uh, uh, the wood that uh, came ashore. Uh, you always have to be uh, behind the high tide line. So you have to pay attention to where you put up your tent. And we're sitting on the rocks here, having a beautiful view of everything what happened. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, this is a, an example of a brain mushroom and uh, a frog pelt lichen on the right hand side picture. There's lots of different creatures. Uh, and uh, here are the sea, the sea caves at Owen Point. Uh, in there, you find a lot of uh, maidenhead fern uh, because it's, uh, it's always moist. And the color is really that beautiful color of green. It's just uh, like fresh green. It just was so beautiful and um, yeah. It's awesome that we could have been there, but the same thing, you see there's beach in front of it. So there's only at certain tides you can actually access those caves and other tides you have to kind of go over it. And we definitely wanted to see those caves. So we made it a point to be able to be there at the right time. Yeah, I, I was lucky the first time around uh, when I did the trail with my brother because uh, we flew in and we had to go a day early because of bad weather. Uh, the next day. So we had an extra day on the trail. So uh, we passed by over top and then the next day we spent walking in there uh, backwards. So that was very nice. Uh, this is uh, on that same trip. We thought we only had nice weather, but I slipped once and uh, that was on a rainy day. And I got a tear in my backpack. So uh, luckily uh, we brought a needle and thread so I can repair the tear. tear. This is our last slide. And um, there's many, many, many more slides we could have shown you, but we've chosen this as the last one because it's a beautiful sunset. And again, we were camping on the beach and we could just sit in front of our tent, have a sip of wine and just enjoy this beautiful view. That's our last. Questions for, for Tinica and Wim. Wow, what great pictures. I have to go kayaking again. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's so worth it because you see so many beautiful spots. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. Um, I, I was gonna ask you, Tinica, how much, like you said in kilometers, I think women carry what 40 pounds and or men 40 and women about 25 on your back is it or I think I have 40 pounds oh my God. close to 40 pounds and we had 45 or something yeah but you are the heaviest is the first day because most of the, the the weight you carry is actually your food yeah um, so what you're doing you eat a lot of stuff in the first few days <laughs> you know, it yeah. helps you a lot actually yeah. I think our 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 British Columbia coastline is fantastic. I've been to pretty well all of those places too, and I found them beautiful. And you came with me to Fino, didn't you, you guys? Yeah. Yes, yes. Beautiful. And also when we were, um, we've been to Banfield a few times and Banfield Marine Station was wonderful too. So 
I've been to a lot and I've been to that, is it Kai Kwat, where we went out with the, um, from Gold River and we went up with the, the Uchuk, I call it the Upchuk, but it's the- Yeah, 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 you could, yeah. Beautiful area, friendly cove and all of that. It was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I, I highly recommend. Any questions for uh, Tim and Wendy? Your pictures were fantastic. Uh, I was yes. wondering how long- Aaron. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Phil. Uh, just wondering how long it took you to get around in Nootka Island. Uh, that was about five days, I think. Yeah, five or six. But what we did, though, is we yeah. started on the north side of Nootka Island, where we dropped off in that bay. Mm -hmm. And then we only did the west coast of Nootka Island. And okay. going up the headlands, down the, the, the coast, because there's not really a trail there. You just go up and down from one beach to another beach. Um, but it really gave us a good impression of what Nootka Island is all about. And then we finished in Friendly Cove. And then um, uh, that one family, they actually have, I think, three cabins there. Yeah. And also oh. two uh, compostable toilet, toilets. And they were donated by the government. And I don't think anyone has ever cleaned in those cabins or did anything about those toilets. Um, but we could stay there inside. And um, it was, yeah, it was a beautiful area, Nootka Island. Yeah. I can recommend no. it. You can kayak around it too. We didn't do that. Um, and that's the most best stars we've ever seen at that bay where we were dropped off with the float plane. Because we were dropped off with the float plane in a bay and we had to step in the water from the, from the float. We had to step in the water, which is probably two feet deep or so. So that was the start of our trip. And we didn't know where to put your feet because there were so many bad stars. And there was, one was orange and one was blue and one was green. It was just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, excellent. Thanks. Yeah. Karen. Karen, I think you had a, pitch, a question, Karen. Yeah. Um, in a couple of places, places you mentioned uh, those toilets, but what did you do on the trail when there was nothing? Well, we bring a little poop scoop and it's orange. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't lose it. And also what you do when you're with a group, how we kind of were taught by white rock leash, it's so nice to go with other people who've done it before you. So you kind of learn uh, the tricks of the trade and all that stuff. So when you're with a group, we always park that little poop scoop in the middle of where we are. So when it's not there, you know, someone is out there somewhere finding and digging a hole and doing something. And uh, so you don't go and go around and disturb people doing their business. And uh, the nice thing on the beach, what you do is you do it below the high tide line. So, you know, the very next day it's going to be flushed and everything is gone. Okay. I thought you had to carry it out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> people do with their dog poop, but we don't do with ours. <laughs> oh, actually, actually, there is a number of American parks where you have to carry it out. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I've heard of it. I just didn't know if they did it there. No. We buried it okay. under the high, high tide line. <laughs> I had a question. Um, the uh, the one place where you were camping, you were very close to the water. So do you do you, and that was where you you had to stay a long time because there was uh, heavy winds. So you yeah. must have a map that shows you where where the high tide mark is because yes, actually you're, with you're very close you. to the water. Yes, actually, with the kayaking, you bring a, a, a sort of uh, your GPS with uh, locations where you can camp, and you make sure you're uh, above the high tide line. And also, you also bring uh, on the, on your uh, GPS alternative spots where you can camp because uh, sometimes because of the weather you can't reach your campsite where you want to go. So you always have to have a plan B. And uh, yeah, sometimes you got stuck. We also have had uh, mm -hmm. twice a trip that we didn't go because of really high winds, like 40 knot winds. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's not a, nice to kayak in. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so that happens too. Uh, I know on those the broken you. islands, they said that they I think they had in a few a few years ago they had closed some of the campsites because of the wolves. Not I think. Were... Oh, I don't know about the broken group, but uh, I know they had uh, a problem on Vargas Island, one of the islands where we were, uh, close to Mayares, and that's uh, well maybe twelve years ago where uh, wolves actually attacked a person sleeping in a sleeping bag on the beach, 
and uh, the person uh, attacked the wolf back, so he survived. But he was uh, he was mauled around the head. The wolf had his yeah. mouth around his head. Wow. Uh, and. Well, on Fargus Island, they did not have, um, they had not bear caches, but they had wolf caches. So you could put your food in there. Oh. Normally when you're kayaking, you leave it in your uh, kayak, oh, but they suggested to leave it in one of those wolf caches just to make sure that they could not get in there and would not be attracted. But the main reason for the wolves doing that is because they have been fed. Yeah. Like people do uh, make a barbecue or whatever, they have sausages and they feed it to the wolves. Yeah. Because they would like to have nice pictures. Uh, so, so, yeah, you have to be very careful that you don't feed wildlife, and especially in those wild areas. And I, I remember um, when, when we were with uh, Rennie Savonet on the beaches of um, Long Beach, we found all of those um, beach flowers that you were showing. I remember we looking. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's lots of those. Is that you just uh, need more time huh, to travel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we're anybody Any else? Questions, guys? I'm just going to say that last picture is just amazing. The one that you ended the presentation with. I hope you framed it because it's it's really artistic and really beautiful. Yeah, and I, I can really say too, none of these pictures have been filtered or anything at all. It's just what nature actually is like. And that's so awesome because when we sit at night, you sit on um, a log somewhere, you sit on a log a lot, and you've got a campfire or something, and you just look at what's going on around you, and it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I have one Wonderful. question. Whoops. Lisa, go ahead. Just a quick question. Did I see Franca and maybe Steve? In the uh, Franca? Yeah, I think on Franca is one of the pictures on Nutka. And Steve, we carried with Steve, so that's quite possible. Yeah. I think I saw Betty Hall, did I? Yes, you did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, she was in the broken room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we had a little adventure with her too. I think she had uh, like a little bit of uh, a headache. And then we luckily had a two person kayak. So, uh, so we could uh, put someone in her kayak and she went uh, with another person. So, uh, Sometimes there's little problems and it's good to talk about it and not just go in your boat, but try to find a solution. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's dangerous. Good stuff. Those are fantastic photos, guys, and excellent stories. You guys know so much about the coast. I love it. Well done. It was well fun done. to do. So thank you again. Because <laughs> yeah. normally you've got, your, you've got all your pictures in the computer right now. So you don't really get to look at them very often. So this is a beautiful way of doing it. So thank you. Now you've got a slideshow to send to your, uh, to your relatives in Holland. I know. Yeah, but yeah. The thing is, when they come, they would expect to see something exactly like that. So <laughs> that takes a little time. <laughs> Yeah, thanks Good. very much. Excellent. You're welcome. Thank you so much, you guys.